ahead and call up Dr. Heidi Schaefer, who's going to be moderating a membership panel. And she will call up her guests. Dr. Heidi Schaefer. So I'm live and unafraid. Actually, I really like the show Survivor. Do you guys watch that show? Have you seen Naked and Afraid? I would never apply because if I was naked, the whole island would be afraid. But Survivor has an analogy to what we're going to talk about, which is membership. For those of you who don't watch Survivor, it's a bunch of people on an island, and the idea is to kind of compete and eventually be the sole survivor. But it's interesting because if you think about what you're being asked to do, you're eliminating all the people that are helping you to survive. So at the end, you're kind of on your own. That's not what Sir Optimus is about. We're all about being a team, you know. And I was going to light a fire in here just to get things started, but I won't because the sprinkler system will go off. And although we've been known, we have SIA people. We've been kicked out of hotels before. Not the hotel, just oh, 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 don't ask hotel. I'm not supposed to say anything. Okay, okay. What happens in, what's that part? Tuscaloosa? Stays in Tuscaloosa. Um, anyway, the point is, um, there's always this, this idea that you have to build a fire at the end. That's like the final competition. I don't know if you've seen it. It's just fascinating because, you know, I could barely light a match. Um, but... At the end of the day, you know, what does it take to make a fire, right? You need somebody to gather all the wood. You need somebody to tend to that fire and constantly add fuel and flame it and stay up all night and making sure it doesn't die out. And that's the spirit of Sir Optimus, but it takes that whole village of people working together to keep this going. So I was thinking of cool mottos. I was very inspired by Sarah's story. Um, Sarah, bang, bang. Um, <laughs> I didn't really have a story, but people know me and I just kind of ad lib. So, and I'm here all weekend and I don't charge. Um, but anyway, the idea, I was like, okay, what's so cool about Sir Optimus? And I think about that fire and what it takes to keep that going. And membership is the core for me. And that's probably why they always hold me to do membership panels and, and membership presentations because I know nothing gets done without members. Like that fire will die out. So today's motto is remember the ember. You're the members. Member ember? Okay. All right. I thank you, thank you. Um, any donations? Um, we'll go to throughout the southern region. Anyway, um, so with that said, I was asked to do a presentation on membership, but unfortunately, some of you were subjected to me not once but twice during COVID on Zoom. Meeting, so I'm not going to get up here and lecture. What I'd really like to do is bring up the experts. And I thought what would be really cool is to have our top performing clubs in our region, which all happen to be in District One. I'll just say that. <laughs> Has nothing to do with me, but these are amazing clubs. And actually, our top one isn't even here because they're kind of, okay. So I'm going to share some secrets about SI Pompano, and then I'm going to tell them their official version because I got something that was mailed to me. Okay, so SI Pompano has a waiting list. Is that, is that ridiculous? A waiting list for members, like, I mean, how do you do that? And how they do it is they literally re require so many things of their members that it's almost like a status symbol to get into that club and to stay in that club. And they're, they're pretty militant. If you don't go to meetings, you get kicked out. If you don't give or get so much money and you don't participate in these events, you get kicked out. So it's, it's amazing. So they actually have an event this weekend that they forced, that they encouraged their... <laughs> is she on Zoom? Because I need to sugarcoat this. Okay, she's not on Zoom. So they have, it's actually really cool. It's a Pompano Seafood Festival and they participate and that's how they make a lot of their money and it just happens to be this weekend. So none of them could be, it could be here, but I asked the president to please send me their pearls uh, because obviously she's not going to be here for the panel. And since they are the top performing club, I thought I should at least share what she wrote. So this is from Becky Ward. She's the president of SI Pompano Lighthouse Point. She said, we have been very fortunate to maintain and even add some members. We are up to 54 members right now with our waiting list. And I think the only reason they don't have more members is they don't have a space big enough to hold them. And during COVID, you can imagine it's been harder to secure spots. Okay, I think most of our success comes from how unique Lighthouse Point and East Pompano is. We have various social groups such as the Lighthouse Point Yacht Club, 
Lighthouse Point Tennis Center, Lighthouse Point Moms Group, Lighthouse Point Recreation Programs, et cetera, that we've been able to gain members from. I think it helps when we have invited a few potential members to our membership drive. So they recruit, right? Which we hold every September. This is a fun, casual way for us to recruit a variety of women in the area. And when they come, they usually come with a few friends and we found out that having a couple people join at a time tends to get them to stay. They feel more comfortable than just coming alone, which makes sense, right? Um, let's see what else. We're very upfront about our commitment, <clears throat> our commitment, signing in blood, that is required financially and with time. No, I actually am really proud of this club. Every time I go to their meetings, I'm like blown away. It's just, it's, it's so unique because every club is so different in my district. And that's why we're gonna have three superstars up here, kind of giving you a glimpse. Um, we're very serious about our expectations. We let women know that if they cannot meet these, it's better for them just to contribute financially or attend our events. Um, we do rummage sales, we do raffles. I can tell you one of the things they do every year, which is kind of cool, which is a service thing, but it's also just a way to brand them is they partner with certain schools, usually Title I schools, and the kids give a Christmas list of what they want. I know they're not here, but honestly, I'm very proud of what they've done and what works for them may or may not work for you, but I just think it's, you know, something to shoot for. 54 members isn't, isn't a small task, especially with the COVID chaos. Uh, one is President Mary Keenan from Boca Raton. Come on up. You're the first contestant on how do you get your members? And then I like to call up I gave you a member. Oh, there she is. Al okay. Come on, get up here, Alexandra. She might tell a joke. I just got to warn you now um, because she is awesome with her humor. And we love her. Okay. And then Homestead, Adrian, come on up, membership chair of Homestead. So I have questions for them. And let's see if they did their homework. Okay. First and foremost, I guess I'm just going to ask you all to tell us why you joined personally, two minutes or less, and then we're going to get into, tell us a little bit about your clubs, what's unique, and the reason I think that's important is obviously maybe what works in Boca might not work in Tuscaloosa, but maybe what works in Homestead, which is a little bit more rural community, maybe there's something they say that sparks an idea for you to, to retain or, or recruit members. So we'll start out with Adrian. tell us about Homestead. Why you became a member, and then a little bit about Homestead. And, and if you have a member count, I don't know if any of you have your exact number of members, but that'd be cool to share. Okay, so um, what was the question again, Heidi? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a major sugar high right now. All right, no, okay. Why did you become a member? I became a member of SI Homestead. Um, my Boyfriend at the time his, that I worked with him and his mother in our now moving company, um, she passed away in a car accident. And these women, I had already gone to a number of events that they had put on, including their annual fashion show. When this happened, I didn't really know any of these women at all. I just showed up to events with Betsy and I thought, oh, these ladies are so fancy and they do such nice things. And um, they all kind of surrounded me and were just like, when are you coming to lunch? You know, like they, they wanted to take care of me. They wanted to, to bring me in. Um, and I really appreciate that. They're some of my best friends. They're my mentors. I call them for anything and pretty much everything. Um, after about the fifth time of running into somebody in the grocery store who was like, when are you coming to lunch? Sorry, I'll come to lunch. And I never stopped coming. Um, what's special about Homestead? Okay, so um, Homestead, we, you know, now that the classifications 
have been pretty much dismissed or deleted, however you want to call it. Um, it's given us the ability to have many more people in that aren't necessarily business women. They're maybe retired grannies or grannies, whatever you want to call them, nanas. You know what I mean? No, you might be, you have a grandma, you have a nana, you, you have stay at home moms that want to participate and they, you know, they have time to give which is what we need. Um, we need the worker bees, you need the finances. Um, and so having the classifications drop gave us the ability to have additional members. Um, we are a rural com community. Um, it's, I think between us and Miami, you know, we're pretty much the only two clubs that used to be Coral Gables, I think now there's Miami. Is it both? Okay. Um, so it, it's just us. It's just between the two of our clubs. And so, um, I don't know, most of us have been around forever. What makes our club special is that we're all like family. Um, we're all very close. We all get along, not to say that we might not like get mad at each other every now and again, but we tell each other and then we move on and get over it. So that's Homestead in a nutshell. Well, what attracted me about was uh, Sir Optimus had placed an ad in the local uh, Davy newspaper, a little like a penny saver, only a, a, a upgrade, a little upgraded version. <laughs> and, and they were having a um, lunch meeting, uh, and the speaker from out of town was a retired female Navy officer, and she had written a book. And my daughter, I was in DC and, and, and was working for the Office of Naval Intelligence. And she was at the Pentagon. And I'm thinking, oh, maybe she knows my daughter. <laughs> but she had already retired. And she gave a tremendous, tremendous speech about women, uh, somewhat similar to what I've heard this morning, women in a male-dominated field and that sort of thing. Anyway, I was very inspired. And Diane Alcamp invited me to dinner and uh, lunch with a Sir Optimus. And, and I was hooked from then on. And I had retired from a high energy job. And um, they say, you, when you retire, you, you got to do crossword puzzles or your brain will turn to mush. And I didn't like crossword puzzles. <laughs> So, so I come, I, I've been reading jokes. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, I just have found my niche. I love um, being with the people. And I think one reason why we have so many is because we have a social event at least once a month and many times, two or three times a month where we do not talk. We, we do not have an agenda. We do not have a Sir Optimist agenda. It's purely social. But once we get together, of course, the conversations always end up. And the bonding is so good that once we get to an event where we need cooperation, all the committees to make something happen, to get a, a good event fundraiser for like 20000 or $30,000, Nobody has to come to us and ask, are you going to be there? They just send the paper around, I'll sign. Yes, I'll clean up. Yes, I'll bring the beer. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, if you had asked me before the COVID, I would have said 49. But since we're after the COVID, I think we're what, 36. We've had some people retire. Well, I was tired last week and I'm retired this week. But uh, several people have moved, like <clears throat> Kathy Blanton moved, left us and moved to a, uh, moved up north. We have several people who have moved into condominiums. But uh, be not afraid. We will be out there doing it again. And some of the things we do that are not fundraiser which eventually help with the fundraising is um, happy hour at my house <laughs> or anywhere in town. 
the 25th of every month, we get together and wear orange for the um, human trafficking, violence against women. And of course, when we wear those little ribbons and our Seroptimus tag, everybody wants to know about it. So we're giving speeches at Geronimo's or whatever happy hour we go to. <laughs> and the whole place gets happy. <laughs> and our social director is always lining up things for us. Museums, uh, the Van Gogh experience. We have live theater we go to. And I think she's going to do the Versace mansion and uh, murder mystery train. And uh, I mean, just think about it. <laughs> then when it comes time to fundraise, we're experienced at raising fun. So why not fund? <laughs> now, where's Dr. Bang? There, I got a story for you. Ding, is that the way it goes? And it's about donation, donors. Well, Sister Susie went to church and the preacher was passing. The preacher said, Okay, it's time to pass the collection plate. Everybody put your money in. Well, the plate came back with uh, only a few dollars and nickels and dimes. He said, Okay, we got to do this again. Now get serious. All the month, all week, you pray to God, bless me, do this for me, do that for me. Now it's time for you to give some money to the church. I hear it's a little incentive. The first person who, who pledges a thousand dollars, I'll let you choose three hymns. So Sister Susie raises her hand. He says, Thank you, Sister Susie, for a thousand dollars. Now I promised her you could choose three hymns. Which ones do you choose? She says, I choose him and him and him. Why would I even want to try and follow this? <laughs> I'm Mary Beth Keenan, and I'm the proud president of the Boca Raton Deerfield Beach Club. And I take no credit in our membership um, because it's really, it's the uh, members themselves. We have 44 members, of which we have two awesome Seroptimisters, uh, Dr. Ron. Isn't that cool? Yes. Ron is here today. We're very excited. And he is a staunch supporter of Seroptimus and always has been. Um, of our 40, a couple of stats for you, because I did read my, do my homework. Um, of our 44 members, we have about 27% who currently are not as active. Um, I think that's important to know because. 27%, that's about 12 members, 12 of our members. And that makes a difference when you're doing programs. Um, but the demographics of our group are a little bit different than some of the other clubs. I look through all our members and with the exception of maybe three or four, they're all working professionals. And that also makes a difference because they're involved in their own organizations. So that works to our benefit though, because we meet them. We, we're a little bit different than Pompano. We know that especially in the area with, in which we live, there are um, a lot of uh, mandates, restrictions put on people. Um, we wanted to present a club opportunity for people to come where there are no restrictions. We understand you're busy. So what we try to do is meet people where they are. If you have a very busy work schedule and you're not able to make our meetings in the mornings, we're continuing with the Zoom to give them the opportunity to still be part of it. Uh, if you, and many of our members, I have to say, they may not be able to be present for our meetings, but when, you know, the rubber hits the road and we need their help with our major fundraiser, Women of Distinction, they come out of the woodwork to help us. 
and we appreciate that. But we also want to, we want them to know that we're, we're here when they're ready to come back. And that's, I think with retention, that's what's helped us. We've had some people who said, I've got to drop out. And the next year they've come back again because their situations and the circumstances have changed. I think what makes Boca um, and Deerfield Club special is, I, and I don't want this to sound wrong, we set our expectations low. We don't want people to feel, I don't want anybody to feel like they can't be part of our club because they can't meet our expectations. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's it. So as you can see, you know, Boca is probably what, an hour, not even an hour away from Pompano. And yet we are really chilled and very laid back. And I think our best assets are our members who go out and recruit for us. They're the ambassadors. And people want to be part of a, a big an organization where we're sort of free flowing and we, we meet them where they're at versus Pompano has this other totally different edict and it works for them. And then you have Davey who clearly enjoys beer. <laughs> so Boy, they could throw down too, okay? We don't even talk about some of the games we play. But um, I know we're probably running out of time. So what I'd love is in two minutes or less, if each one of you can tell us, you know, if you had to give advice, you know, this is how we best recruit a member and maybe this is how we best retain a member in your respective district, in your respective club, knowing that it might not be applicable to everybody here. But if there's some suggestions you could just throw out, I'd love for people to have a list of, these are things maybe we should consider doing in our club. And I always tell people like, gauge your own club. If you're a club that's more set of, you know, like, like maybe older people who that don't want to get out and go to the bars, you know, do a book club, do something, a bingo night, something that would be like kind of maybe crossword puzzles, even though you don't like them. Um, but gauge it according to, you know, what you see fit. I just wanted you to hear from experts who are obviously successful, even during COVID, these are, are, are out of four clubs, these are the top three that are still here that are here to present their suggestions to you. So if you can just give the suggestions about kind of how it works in your area, two minutes for you, two minutes for you, I appreciate that. So I think the, the best uh, recruitment event that we've held, uh, there were actually two. The first one was just a girls night out that we had. We just, it was a social, um, we went bowling and that was not the most recent time. I'm looking at Yvette like right past the knees, not the most recent one, because that was just, we were like out of COVID finally. Um, but prior to that, we had a bowling event where you could invite, you know, your girlfriends. Um, and it wasn't even, we weren't actively trying to like draw you in, but we were subliminally. Um, <laughs> we wanted, we want people to know that we're fun. And, you know, I think all of us are, are that way. We're not stuffy, we're not stodgy. I mean, yes, there's a time to work, but there's a time to play and bond with your members. Um, so getting people in through the, the, the bowling night was, was one. The second one that we had, which I was really impressed with the turnout that we had was at a member's house that was close by. And the amount of women that just kept coming through the door was just like astounding. The whole place was packed, her entire kitchen and like living room area, everything was completely crowded and these ladies, were excited to be there. They were excited to listen to everything that we had to say. We went through what we do as a club. Most of them had heard about us either through a, a friend or fellowship or had been to one of our events. And um, I think that that one was probably even better than any that we've held. And we had probably seven new members out of that one. Um, with that being said, COVID has, I don't, we haven't lost as many members because of COVID as we have more inactive members because of COVID and because of real estate. A lot of our members are realtors. They are nonstop. If any of you are in real estate, you know, you don't have two seconds to spare. Um, and, you know, so that's my, my suggestion would be to 
from, from the homestead point of view, we try to make it not intimidating. We want you to feel comfortable. We want you to feel welcome. And the first time that you come to our lunch, I want you to come sit next to me or I will go sit next to you. I don't want to see somebody sitting by themselves. Um, we want you to feel welcome like you belong with us, even if you feel kind of uncomfortable at first. We went to a theater one night and uh, there were half a dozen of us and um, we were waiting for the doors to open. And this little lady was sitting all by herself and she kept looking at us, but she was too shy to say anything. So I went over and I reached out to her and said, uh, have you been to the theater before? You know, non-generic uh, conversation. Oh, that's my first time, whatever. Anyway, it opens the door to conversation and now she's a member of Sir Optimus. So uh, just because um, somebody does not approach you doesn't mean for you not to approach them. Be open. You can't, I know it sounds very cliche, but a smile will open the door. I was at some resort in California and I, my husband and I and my daughter walked out of the resort to go to dinner someplace. And this big limo comes up and opens and everybody gets out of the cars boom, like this. And I had this great big smile on my face and they all turned and smiled. I, I'll never forget that. That's kind of etched in my brain. That everybody in that limo had a frown on their face. And they didn't know me from Adam. I guess they thought I was a hotel employee. I don't know. <laughs> but I had this great big smile, and they all smile back. So whenever I see somebody, whether it's in an elevator or, you know, wherever I go, if they're looking at me for more than two seconds, you know, I say, how's the weather? You know, not so optimist, just general. Now, turn the page. I threw a hat slash wine tasting hat party at my house. With that hat that I put on Pat, I have a room with 35 hats in different colors. A huge hat. So when you come in, and I invited all the seroptimists, and I said, bring a friend who's not a seroptimist. And it was not a seroptimist event until they got there. <laughs> and I said, go in the hat room, put a hat on, any hat you like. And we wore the hats all afternoon. We had a little informal wine tasting and charcuterie board. And, and then the next week, we called those people and invited them to dinner, uh, to lunch with the seroptimist, compliments of the seroptimist. And that was a big event. So I'd, I'd like to do that once a year. We didn't do it the last two years because of the COVID. But um, I think one of the important things, and I want to go on record saying I'm highly impressed and in awe of the Pompano Club because obviously they know their demographics, as do these two other clubs. They know what appeals to the people who join their clubs. So I think that would be one thing I would suggest. Know your people, know what's going to interest them and bring them along. One of the things two of our Seroptimist members started on their own was a, an adventure club. And while it wasn't a sanctioned event through Seroptimist, Seroptimist members go and attend and they go around once a month and they check out new sites. So they might go kayaking or a sunset tour. Um, it, it's great for getting people together, seroptimists and non-seroptimists, in a, in a very um, easygoing, relaxed atmosphere. I think the other thing that is highly important in the wake of COVID is relationships. Um, building those relationships with people and maintaining them is what's going to keep them in the club because when they know that you notice that they haven't been here, that goes a long way. So I think that's a huge um, component for re 
member retention is to make sure that we're reaching out to those people because so many people were isolated during COVID and they haven't come out of it all the way yet. So to reach out to all those members and talk with them and just let them know we, we care about you and we just want to make sure you're okay. And a postscript, whenever you are. No, yes. Oh. <laughs> At the first time I come to a meeting, I make sure I sit next to a newbie. I sit next to the newbies. to really know what works in our area. You know, maybe not everybody's interested in going to a bar, not everybody's interested in going to a book review. Um, but at the end of the day, I think we can all make those connections. And I don't know if you guys know the data, but when we've done internal surveys, the number one and number two reasons that people join for us is obviously service. We haven't talked that much about service projects, but that draws in a lot of people and naturally they're going to want to stay because they want to give back. But then it's the fellowship that really plugs people. So if you're part of a warm, like getting back to the fire analogy, you know, we want the warm set that fire, it takes people to build the fire and keep people feeling safe. And so I think all these clubs, you guys obviously have that magic, and I've just been fortunate enough to have these clubs in my district. But they're the ones that do the work day in, day out, right? It's really without, without the members, we have nothing. I mean, we can't fundraise. We can't reach 500,000 million people. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has a role. And to be honest, as members, I'm going to kind of put it a little bit back on you, and I know this is kind of mean because I'm not super excited to how we can help, but part of it's incumbent on you. If you're happy in your club, why are you not bringing someone to the next meeting? Why are you not telling somebody about this great organization that is, to me, in some ways, the best hidden secret of many of our communities? We have to do our own branding, too. It's on us. You know, we all signed up for this. It's a great volunteer position. We don't get paid. But we do it because we care. We want to make a big impact and reach 500 gazillion. I mean, the number is just the <laughs> So the bottom line is we all have to do our part. And I find that it's these kinds of people, this part, that make a difference. And by you guys spreading the word, you will like literally, you'll not, not only will you get the members or recruit them, but you will be fortunate to retain them because they're going to want to hang around when you're a cool baby. Do you want to say just one thing? Okay. The one thing I was going to say is, um, kind of like I said when I when I met the lady that's her optimist after my mother-in-law passed, don't just ask once. I mean, don't be a badger about it. But just because they couldn't come to your meeting or something, you know, an event one time, or ask them again. Hey, we're having a you know this meeting, and you know if they're like really no, then just leave it alone. <laughs> but I just don't give up because had they stopped asking me, the introvert in me would have just been like, yeah, that's cool, I'll just stay home, and I would have missed out on a lot. Thank you. 